Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at BYT5 towards a token-free future with pre-trained byte-to-byte models. The majority of existing pre-trained language models typically operate on the subword level, meaning that they operate on sequences of tokens representing subword units. For example, if we take a look at a sentence such as In Japan, Cloison and Amelis are and Amelis are well known as Shipoyaki. What a typical um, pre-processing model such as sentence piece will do is it's gonna split the tokens into subword units. So some words which are occurring frequently in the data set, such as in and Japan, are gonna be represented as a single um, entity or single single representation, whereas more rare words such as Cloison uh, here will be represented in this case with three tokens or three subword units and the model is then trained to process um, inputs and outputs in such a way using those subword units this has been very effective however has a number of limitations um, practically so most notably if the task that you're working on is sensitive to the specific characters for example if there might be spelling mistakes in the input text that you get this approach will not work so you will not be able to represent if, if a word has a spelling mistake it will not be able to represent it in a correct way and basically it will it will actually fail completely uh, because if you have a spelling mistake it will lead to a completely different subword encoding or it will lead to out of vocabulary um, tokens containing the input sequences so an alternative approach is to go a lower, le lower level and this is um, typically done by focusing on characters or bytes, UTF-8 bytes, which is the focus of the current paper in which the authors propose BYTE5, a novel encoder-decoder model variant of T5 architecture which has been very popular, which operates on sequences of characters instead of sequences of subword units. So given the input sentence, you represent each character um, separately and you process um, these sequences of inputs and outputs, the sequences of characters. And furthermore, the authors modify the pre-training objective to fit into this character level paradigm. So as you might know, T5 model is has a lot of is pre-trained a lot of different tasks and they they modify for example to um to uh, to do the prediction using characters which is one of the main contributions of the paper but this is the basically uh, the idea of the paper they introduce the by t5 model and uh they train it on um, train models of different sizes and release them to the public and they investigate of course what recipe for such a pre-trained character level model works the best and on which tasks tasks does it work well or not well some of the key takeaways of the paper are that the authors actually found out that using a much larger encoder is helping this character level model so in this in this paper the encoder is three times the size of the decoder this is done to compensate due to the smaller number of um, vocabulary embeddings used in the encoder due to the much smaller size of the vocabulary so now the vocabulary will be for example 300 characters and you're going to have 300 by um, let's say 1000 embeddings instead of 50,000 by 1000 embeddings in the models train on subword level so the author compensates by increasing the encoder size and basically the logic and the pr process processing logic is moved in the encoder um, rather than in the embedding layer the authors of course as i mentioned propose specific pre-training tasks to make the model work on the character level and the authors perform a bunch of experiments to investigate how well it works basically one main takeaway from the paper is that it seems that by t5 models targeting general purpose tasks outperform equivalent subword level models however this happens only when considering small model sizes so for example on the glue and the super glue benchmark by t5 outperforms mt5 which is a multilingual t5 model at a small and base size but a large extra large and xxl size which are over 10 billion parameters uh, the last one the mt5 outperforms by t5 the strength of by t5 comes in especially when considering tasks 
tasks that are specifically sensitive towards the character level of the sequences that have to be processed as I mentioned earlier. For example, when the text is noisy. So to sum up, by T5 outperforms MT5 on the following scenarios. When the model size is below 1 billion parameters on some generative tasks, on multilingual tasks with in-language labels, something that I didn't talk about, but they also do a bunch of experiments on multilingual tasks, which you can take a look at yourself. And furthermore, as I said, on word level tasks sensitive to spelling and pronunciation. And in the presence of various types of noise seems to be by T5 is promising. So it seems to be a interesting paper, um, nice advancement towards making character level models practically usable. Of course, there's still some limitations, most notably when you work on the character level, you have to deal with much larger sequences, which is problematic for transformer models, leading to, um, in this paper, 33% longer pre-training time and up to 10, 10 times slower uh, inference of those trained models. So clearly, those models are not the best when you want to deal with very long sequences, but it's a promising research direction to be improved further on in the future. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one.